Good afternoon and welcome everyone. I am Jyoti Shaw, Faculty of the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Shunandanath College for Women. Thank you all for joining Shunandanath College for Women with lecture series. Shurandanath College for Women was established in 1948 and the core mission of the college is to provide meaningful education to girls largely from poor families so that they can become more self-reliant. The topic of today's web lecture is Introduction to Communication Research and it is my pleasure to welcome the speaker, Professor Atashi Bhattacharya, Faculty of the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Shurandanath College for Women. She is doing her PhD from the Department of Communication Management and Technology to the Jambeshwar University of Science and Technology. She was an English student at Akashwani Kolkata before joining academy. Before we begin, I would like to request all the participants to write the questions in the chat box and a feedback we will also be providing a chat box in due time. Please write your email and name everything correctly in the feedback link. Over to you, Atashiri. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jyoti, uh, for inviting. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, everyone who is present here. Uh, I would, before starting my presentation, I would just grab the opportunity to uh, wish uh, my professors who are present here a very happy Teacher's Day. I will dedicate this presentation to, the, to them only because whatever I am today, is just because of their hard work and uh, their encouragement. So quickly, I will thank um, my professors of graduation postgrads, uh, Professor Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey, uh, so Shoto Bhatto Paul Sir, Shravani Mukhopadhyay Ma'am, uh, Ushushire Sengupta Ma'am, and Konka Majumdar Ma'am. Also, uh, I would like to thank the professors of uh, Communication Management and Technology Department, uh, Guru Jambeshwar University of Science and um, Technology. Uh, the department, actually, I started, my, my concept of research started from there. So I owe a lot to them. Uh, I would really, uh, I would like to thank Professor Umesh Arya, sir, my guide, Professor Dr. Sushil Kumar, sir, um, Manoj Dayal, sir, uh, Professor Mihir Ranjan Patra, sir, uh, and uh, Professor Vikram Kaushik, sir. So thank you so much, all these uh, uh, eminent personalities in the field of journalism. Uh, in, like, if they won't be there, I would not be here uh, in, in front of you. So thank you, all my professor, and happy Teacher's Day. And thanks to the students who have always showed love uh, to me. And thank you, Jyoti and Ananya, for being a very good, uh, you know, supportive colleagues. So quickly, uh, without much ado, I will start my presentation. I'll just ask permission to share my screen. Is it visible? Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay, okay. I'll just uh, start the. Hmm. Hmm. I guess uh, now uh, it's it's maximized. Yes. Yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, before uh, going into the uh, details of the lecture, just let me just uh, point out certain uh, objectives of the web lecture today. So through the uh, slides to the presentation, I would like to frame communication research, uh, discuss the broad areas of communication research, the br broad approaches to communication research, and also the, the most common problem which we face is you know differentiating between method and methodology i would also uh, talk about how the research process the steps of research process i will elaborate with an example and finally we'll talk about we'll discuss discuss about certain you know current, current trends which are uh, seen in communication research in the field of communication so normally whenever we talk about research uh, 
this kind of picture does it conjures up in your mind uh, a mad scientist with a, a beaker in his hand doing something in the lab you know uh, so but uh, does this measure up with the realities of researching human communication is this the reality uh, actually uh, you would be very surprised to know that we are you know engaged in various levels of communication research in our everyday life without even knowing it so now you must be wondering how uh, have you ever like let me give you some examples mm, for example a student when i was in graduation sometimes i used to run out of money so what we used to do we uh, asked our parents for extra money so now you must wonder where is the question of research in this so uh, basically if a student asks for extra money um, from his uh, his or her parents they work upon the theorize upon certain communication messages that might work in order to get that extra uh, money for example uh, in the last semester maybe they have asked for extra money on the pretext of some extra classes or you know um, some assignments um, so uh, they have theorized on that so then they may uh, you know uh, they may talk about uh, like they may you know frame certain hypothesis that this will work uh, in the um, you know best way to ask for uh, extra money so they will uh, just try that the same uh, line the same excuse again if the line their hypothesis works this time as well that is okay they will validate their hypothesis if that does not work if this new excuse or, or the the old excuse does not work they will come up with some new excuse they will work on their you know a hypothesis and uh, they would formulate a new hypothesis to get some alternative result a better outcome so similarly uh, as the examples you can see in this slide as well uh, planning out you know persuading uh, uh, persuading my family to go on a vacation we we do communication research um, even when uh, you know we are uh, we have talked to our friend we have promised on meeting him or her somewhere and we arrived late and then we are you know even uh, we said that we will help our friend but we forget to do that favor so you know uh, and sometimes we intentionally do uh, do that as well to just see what happens so every time you know uh, we are researching uh, we do not consider these examples as formal communication research but they do reveal a lot about what communication research is about so now uh, coming to what communication research is uh, obviously we know that we uh, when we talk about communication we talk about laswell's model who says what to whom uh, through which channel with what effect so communication research undertakes a scientific study of this communication process the various elements involved in a communication process it is also an interdisciplinary uh, you know study which borrows from uh, both in theory and methods from various other social and behavioral sciences psychology sociology anthropology so uh, it involves application of these social and behavioral methods uh, to the st study of communication issues and problems so now let's talk about the areas of communication research so as i already mentioned the laswell formula the first is who communicator uh, then says what in which channel to whom with what effect so uh, this is what is laswell's formula and uh, if we look at this very uh, minutely we will understand that the areas of communication research involves these elements only and the interactions of these elements when we talk about who then we are talking about the communicator or the source so the communication research area of control analysis is borrowed you know uh, it, it gets motivated from here we uh, want to uh, 
we want to learn more about the nature of the communicator characteristics which makes him effective in persuasive you know uh, effective persuasive communication we even explore how uh, the sources characteristics such as credibility expertise intent uh, you know they they affect the acceptance of the message by the receivers there has been uh, abundant research in the uh, in the um, like tradition exploring characteristics of communicators and how uh, these characteristics affect the receivers next coming to the message analysis or says what analyzing the content of messages the content analysis methodology of research is very favorite among uh, uh, communication researchers and um, we relate each other um, uh, elements in this process as well the quality of the messages the kind of messages messages are studied which are disseminated through various mediums their comprehensibility um, their uh, the, the the kind of interest they are arousing uh, the attention value which each of the messages are getting and the final impact these things are Uh, continuously being researched upon and how these messages are uh, in uh, impacting the individual behaviors attitudes and values of the uh, of the society and culture it forms a major chunk of the communication research now next third uh, element which is you know in which channel or the medium uh, gives rise to medium analysis media analysis or channel analysis each media uh, which is available has uh, has um, distinctive characteristics and they may facilitate and they may even impede the communication effectiveness uh, the well known uh, communication theoretician uh, marshall mcluhan uh, he goes to the extent of advocating the that that medium through which the message is communicated has more impact on the receiver than the message itself his book which is titled the medium is the message uh, it makes a distinction between you no know, hot media and cold media whether media stimulates active participation or induces a passive and receptive state of mind in the audience so um, even uh, how the diffusion um, uh, process how in the various steps of the diffusion process uh, uh, researchers are very much interested in the role of mass media how ma mass media is working uh, what is their role in each stage of the uh, you know diffusion process how it finally aids to the adoption or whether it has any role or not so we have various media uh, channels like print radio folk audio visual and most recently the digital media so these uh, me the channels of communication has also sparked lots of communication research advertisers are also interested in this media analysis because it helps them to take a decision on selecting the right kind of uh, medium to reach to their target audience uh coming to the fourth the receiver the element of receiver uh, uh here it constitutes the audience analysis part of the communication research audience are uh, widely fragmented segmented audience are uh, not homogeneous they are heter heterogeneous uh, they vary in their size composition geographical distribution interests attitudes opinions behaviors so these all aspects have uh, you know been the main focus of lot of communication studies media owners are particularly interesting interested in knowing the nature of their audience so that they can make appropriate uh, they can you know develop appropriate messages uh, catering to their uh, particular needs and tastes readership studies are done for the same purpose program ratings you already know about television rating points trps so program rating procedures are, are some of the best example of you know or the audience research finally with the fifth element uh, process and effects research uh, the effect can be studied at several level the exposure 
the comprehension, the recall of the messages by the um, audience, uh, the acceptance, their action, what action they are taking after uh, they are exposed to the messages. So mass media audiences are not just passive anymore as it was seen in um, the hypodermic uh, bullet model, um, sorry, magic bullet or hypodermic needle theory. So our audiences are not passive agents. They, uh, they do not react you know, equally or identically to what they see and read. Their needs, their biases, uh, their background, uh, they, it, it all affects how a person is perceiving and interpreting and reacting to the various media communication. So process and effect analysis um, and, and this area of communication research becomes very important. Also, uh, now, you know, more and more we can see that audiences are not individuals. Um, viewing audience members as isolated individuals uh, is no more a trend. We have to see them as members of various groups which they belong, maybe family, community, institution or other reference groups. So uh, before going on to talk about the research methodologies, uh, I will talk briefly about method versus methodology. Uh, see, there there is a table in front of you, and the comparison is based on the basis of uh, meaning, what it is, and what it encompasses, what it comprises of, and the objectives. So research methods, basically, it implies the methods which are employed by researcher to conduct the research. Whereas research methodology signifies the way in solving the research problems. Now, what is research methodology exactly? Uh, normally, they are instruments, uh, their construction of uh, the research, um, the research design, res uh, sorry, the construction of the tools maybe the questionnaire and all. And, and uh, research methodology is the science of understanding how research is performed you know, scientifically and methodically. Um, so as I said that we can conduct, how we carry out the research methods, we can conduct experiments, we can conduct tests, we can conduct surveys and so on. Uh, and for the, for uh, thinking about a methodology, it will, in, uh, you know, it will, uh, talk about the different techniques, how these you know, methods can be utilized uh, so that the research object is fulfilled. Then there are different you know, investigation techniques which are there in research method. But research methodology is the entire strategy because we have some objective to fulfill, uh, to meet through our research process. So, um, when we talk about uh, like what are the terms before i talk about the research process or the methodologies uh, i need to introduce you to two uh, you know important concepts the words epistemology and ontology what exactly they are what exactly do they mean uh, ontology is you know, it is a philosophical field which revolves around the study of the nature of reality, what exists. Um, so the ex existential conditions related to the social, cultural and political contexts, uh, the different entities and categories within the reality. We refer. Uh, so uh, I will share some videos just one or two minute video uh, before i go on to the next topic i'll just quickly tell you what epistemology is and i i will again repeat it so epistemology is how the knowledge is obtained right so i'll just quickly ask your permission and share some video with you Is it visible, Jyoti? Has this no, not yet. Yes, right now. It's yes, coming. it's coming. Yeah, coming. we can see it. Okay, okay. 
so just it's just a, a video of 1 minute and 20 seconds so i'll just play if just uh, confirm if the sound if the audio is uh akash sir can you please yes is the uh, audio coming no have you shared it from chrome tab hmm is the audio no it's not yet audible no it's not audible okay no the youtube thing or is it on your pro system no uh, sir it's on my system only okay. then you play it through a chrome tab control o on the chrome tab and find out where okay. it is and then play. otherwise it will not Please call her. She doesn't know she's left. She's back. I'll start with the last. Yeah, it's audible now. Epistemology, the study or theory of knowledge. I'll start with the last question first. Assuming there is a reality out there that is knowable, how do we obtain this knowledge? Well, there are many different epistemological views. I'll just discuss the two most important views here. First, there's rationalism. Rationalists hold that knowledge is gained through reason. Using our mind's capability for logical, rational thought, we can deduce truths about the world without having to resort to experience. Philosophers like Plato and Descartes coupled rationalism with the idea that at least some of the abstract concepts about the structure of nature are innate. We're born with them. That means our mind simply has the capability of understanding these concepts because we already know them. We just have to remember or recognize them by using our reasoning. 
empiricism opposes this view. According to the empiricist view, sensory experience is the most important way. And according to some strict empiricists, even the only way to obtain knowledge about the world. Aristotle is considered the first empiricist. Was it audible? Yeah, it was audible. Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, quickly before showing you the video of ontology, I'll, I'll just talk about epistemology once. So as we uh, saw in the video, uh, epistemology is uh, the, it's, it's a philosophical field uh, which revolves around the, 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 the field revolving around the study of knowledge and how to reach it. Uh, epistemology, uh, normally here we talked about two views, epistemological views. Was one is rationalism and one is empiricism. So rationalism, the rationalists, uh, they hold that knowledge is gained uh, through reason, using our mind's capability for logical, rational thought. Uh, we deduce truths about the world, and uh, you know we we do not um, fall uh, like we do not go for uh, experience. We do not have to resort to experience we can deduce the truth about the world from our logical rational mind like uh, the um, rationalists like plato and descartes names were uh, there they were they they coupled rationalism with the idea that some abstract concepts about the structure of uh, of the nature are innate it's in in our mind so we just know to re uh, we just uh, need to remember them uh, we obtain the knowledge through deductive reasoning uh, so, uh, next, I'll just uh, want to uh, share the. Atashiri, uh, sorry hmm. to interrupt. Uh, is the video on? Is yeah, it like, yeah, now we can see. Yes. Okay, okay I'm so sorry. Hmm. So, I will now quickly. Uh, show the Oh, I got disconnected again. Yes. Hmm. So sorry, the moment I'm changing the uh, presentation, I'm getting disconnected. I'm so sorry. So coming back to ontology. Is the screen visible? Mm. Yeah, it's visible. For the study of being. Which and app? The, the audio is there. Subject ontology, ontology or, the, or study the study of being. being. Yeah, but we can hear it twice, you know. Like it's not clear. The audio is not that clear. You mute your microphone when you, when the video is on. Exactly. Hmm. Subject of ontology or the study of being. Yeah, now it's asks, clearly audible. What is the nature of reality? Well, there are many competing views. Subject of ontology, or the study of being, which asks, what is the nature of reality? Well, there are many competing views. Oh, 
I think Atashid is having some problem with the internet connectivity. Hello. Oh. Yes. Now, now we can see you. Yes. Uh, I um, uh, there is a connection problem, network problem at my end as well. I won't uh, share the video anymore. I'll just talk about. I guess uh, the video got disconnected in between. Exactly. Just for a mm -hmm. few seconds, we have seen it for a few seconds for seven okay. seconds. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. So, uh, extremely sorry. Uh, Basically, uh, ontology is the. I'll just share my just the my presentation, presentation again. Hmm. Yes. So yes. Um, basically, these two ideas, they act as foundations of our approach to a research question. When we talk, think about uh, starting a research or doing a research, so the first, obviously, the first process is to think about a research problem or a research question. So we have certain knowledge or we uh, need to obtain uh, the knowledge. So we need, uh, you know, we have to understand what frames, you know, um, that knowledge or frames our research and influences our choice of finding a research question. So there, this is the uh, like time when epistemology and ontology, the philosophical ideas of epistemology and ontology comes into view. So ontology uh, is like the existential conditions. Um, when uh, the in the video actually it talked about that there are some uh, universal particulars uh, some particulars and universals for example um, the feeling of love uh, we know uh, we know about uh, the feeling that uh, we know that our pet loves us right we know about that feeling but we cannot um, it, it it is not something we cannot see we have to it has to be expressed and when somebody's behavior and through somebody's behavior and expression we get to know about the feeling of love so ontology uh, is uh, basically it talks about two things whenever we perceive anything in uh, the, in the in in world in nature uh, do we have some you know do we perceive at that thing outside our um, uh, outside our knowledge or it is something inside our ma mind so uh, so whether the the where we the, the representation the mental representations that are constructed by our mind uh, you know they are existing in our mind or it is com coming from something outside so that's why i gave the video talks about the the example of love that it's a general property we cannot observe it directly it, it cannot uh, uh, you know, we cannot observe it, but we can uh, feel it from somebody's expression or behavior. So when my pet uh, climbs on my lap, takes a nap, then uh, that is a particular particular instance 
of the universal property of love. So ontology and epistemology are philosophical um, ideas which acts as foundation of our uh, research question. There are um, three broad approaches to communication research, uh, or we can say three paradigms. Uh, so what are they? They are rhetorical re um, methodologies, um, quantitative methodologies, and qualitative methodology. Um, the, what is rhet rhetorical perspective? The, the, the systematic research of messages um, tells us a great deal about the ways uh, people communicate, the context in which they communicate, the effects of communication in particular context, the potential areas to challenge and transform messages to create um, social change. So basically, the rhetorical method methodologies help us determine how and why messages are effective or ineffective as well as the outcomes of messages on audiences if we uh, talk about quantitative and qualitative research quantitative research basically is it is all about numbers and figures uh, and qualitative research is about in-depth study uh, about the its cut its context, the textual data. So um, quantitative research quantify opinions, attitudes, behaviors, and other defined variables with the goal to support or refute our hypothesis about a specific problem. So it's all about numbers. It's all about quantifying the uh, data. Uh, and qualitative research is about you know discovering or gaining in-depth understanding of uh, an individual's experiences, his thoughts, his opinions, the trends, and you know, to dig deeper into the problem at hand. So when we uh, differentiate quantitative and qualitative research, we can just simply say that quantitative research focuses on testing theories and hypotheses, and through quantifiable data, they, they analyze through you know statistical analysis, maths and statistical analysis. It's expressed in numbers, graphs, and tables. The data are expressed in the, the analyzing and the, the analysis and the reports. They will con consist of a lot of numbers, graphs, and tables. Uh, respondents are required to um, do this kind of research and uh, there are there are always closed questions basically mcqs multiple choice questions when we prepare a questionnaire and then we uh, test the objectivity replicability we uh, uh, test validity we test the validity of our research conducted Qualitative research, on the other hand, focuses on exploring ideas and formulating a theory or hypothesis, analyzing, uh, the summarize, categorize, interpret, normally analysis is presented in this form. They are expressed in words. And we can even, for example, a case study, we require very few respondents. The number does not matter a lot. And the questions which are there in the questionnaire, maybe, uh, that will be open-ended questions. And so what we intend to do, we in intend to understand, uh, we intend to you know, contextualize, we find out the complexity, the subjectivity. Uh, these are the key terms in quanti uh, qualitative research. Now, coming to the research process, as you can see, this this uh, diagram has been taken from a book, and um, there are broadly seven steps of research. The first and the foremost uh, important task is to define the research problem, for which we talked about just a few minutes back, the epistemological and ontological 
ideas. So the first step when we want to start a research process that will be defining the research problem. When we are selecting a research problem, we need to see whether it is researchable, whether it, whether it is a verifiable. verifiable. Um, so it can be one particular state, statement, it can be a, a mix of uh, statements. So when we are um, we, we fix on a topic we want to research about, then uh, the next step comes, and it's not like it, they are like a linear process. Sometimes after re reviewing the uh, relevant literature, that is the second step of the research process, sometimes our research problem may also you know, change. Mm -hmm. Or we can make minor changes. So reviewing literature, what is literature review? We read, study all the uh, relevant um, materials related to the research problem. Uh, we can consult books, uh, previous research done on the same topic by uh, researchers. So we get their thesis. Uh, there is uh, mm, lots of uh, you know l l online sites uh, from where we can you know library uh, sites, ebooks, uh, then uh, articles, books. So we can uh, refer to them. If not, if we do not get any uh, research related to our particular topic, then related research topics also uh, constitutes the reviewing of literature. The third thing is hypothesis. What is a hypothesis? Hypothesis is an unproven statement or proposition that can be refuted or supported by empirical data. Hypothetical statements assert a possible answer to our research question, the research problem. So the next step, the step four, is uh, designing the research. Research design, which includes sample design. What is research design? It is a blueprint or framework for fulfilling the objectives. We normally, when we um, define a research problem, uh, we review literature, we find out some research gaps, and we uh, lay down certain objectives which we need, we want to fulfill, we want to test, verify. So the research design uh, gives a framework for fulfilling those objectives and answering the research question or questions. It is a master plan and which specifies the methods and procedures we will be using in our research process. Um, even uh, the sampling is very important. Uh, because the population, the sample which we uh, we will be taking, which will be uh, you know studied, it must be defined uh, properly. The last three uh, stages, collecting data, analyzing data, you know it includes obviously collecting. We in the research design uh, step, we identify whether we want to you know make questionnaires, we want to do surveys, or we want to do interviews, telephonic interviews or we want to do content analysis, we, we decide what we want to do. And in collecting the data stage, we either through questionnaires and all, we collect the data. We are getting it in quantified form. And then we analyze the data uh, with the help of statistical softwares. Uh, we, we report it um, and we interpret it using after the, like, the the tables, the pie charts, the bar graphs, which we get after you know analyzing the data through di different statistical processes, we interpret and finally we report the uh, either it is a research proposal or the or uh, you know you know to um, some research paper to be presented in a conference or it can be a thesis. So then we interpret and report. So I'll just explain the same seven steps using one example from communication research. For example, my research problem is to study on uh, science coverage in vernacular newspapers in West Bengal. So what my literature review will consist of, uh, I can, uh, con uh, you know, I can re uh, read thesis, books, articles on the same topic or related to the topic. The third part is um, the hypothesis formulation. So one hypothesis can be science gets less importance in vernacular newspapers of West Bengal. So this is a statement which I want to test. Content then uh, coming to the research design. I want to uh, 
you know test this hypothesis uh, with the use of content analysis i will select three to four vernacular newspapers and i will study those vernacular newspapers of west bengal over a fixed period of time let's say six months or one year and i will see all the news uh, uh, articles which are there i will categorize the news articles as well and then i uh, make a proper code book for example categories of news what kind of news are uh, you know related to science are covered in which page uh, whether there are follow up stories whether there are pictures so i will with the help of a code book i will collect data and then uh, we have a, everybody knows a very popular statistical software spss so we can we are using a statistical software such as our statistical means for analysis and we conduct validity and reliability tests to prove uh, our uh, our hypothesis or to to support or to refute and finally we interpret and report the results so coming uh, to the uh, the final part what are the current trends uh, in communication research so there are uh, communication is uh, the the industry the media and communication industry is one of the fastest uh, growing sectors in the recent decades and uh, mm, there are you know uh, various segments of uh, film television advertising print um, music digital media so there is all the sectors are experiencing phenomenal growth so new trends are keep on evolving and we need and they all become very integral part of communication research so what do i mean by less mass media audience media sector um, holds consumers in 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 like uh, for up one for one particular medium sometimes for one particular channel sometimes we do not get the entire mass so uh, less mass selective audience i mean to say when i say less mass media audience i mean to say less audience or selective audience to one particular media or one particular channel um there is a audience segmentation and fragmentation which can be seen and this is uh, you know uh, researched a lot um now the social media is 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 on boom and uh, uh, various uh, uh, platforms are there for content de delivery uh, for example we have twitter instagram uh, pinterest linkedin uh, so there are lots of uh, uh, media new me media technology are coming up and there are lots of issues which are related to them for example fake news and etc so uh, this also give rise to uh, recent um, trends then uh, earlier as we said that earlier it was the case when the source the communicator had a upper hand it had a dominant role of selecting um, messages but now there is an increased audience control over the messages uh, because uh, user generated content okay is there is there any problem uh, jyoti am i audible Yes, yes, yes. You are okay, audible. Okay, okay, fine. So um, there is an increased audience control, um, which we can see. Um, even YouTube and other uh, platforms have given um, chance for uh, user-generated content. Artificial intelligence is getting very stronger, and it is going to be, uh, you know, one of the current trends in communication research. Um, the the lockdown period has given ri uh, rise to a lot of you know live streaming communication trend online classes uh, you know the communication has uh, gone to a different level because of that so all these uh, uh, changes which is happening in technology and in our society uh, gives rise to various uh, communication research processes so um, with that i'll end my presentation Thank you so much, Atashi Bhi, for such an enlightening session.
as time is uh, time is running out i would like to invite sir to add something i don't have anything to add uh, she's uh, presented wonderfully well and i'm so proud of her presentation and uh, we are especially proud because you know she's also an alumnus of our college so i'm sure this will be very helpful uh, you know we'll be putting it up on youtube for uh, students and colleagues all over so if there are questions i invite uh, i can see colleagues from different parts of the country there uh, in today's meeting so if anybody has a question you may invite that congratulations once again thank you sir i guess my network and i i i committed certain mistakes no, i'm so sorry is. for that <laughs> you handled it wonderfully well that can happen to anyone very good uh, so i think uh, is there any question for many participants yeah. you can unmute and you can definitely ask the question directly hi ma'am this is swagata de from sister nivedita university hello hello swagata hello hello ma'am thank you so much for the beautiful presentation uh, ma'am could you please tell us if uh, if you could elaborate something about experimental research designs mm okay uh, experimental research design normally uh, in mass me uh, like i will just try to answer and if i go anywhere wrong then uh, sir is there obviously experimental re research design normally for example um uh, you want to test um, the you know uh, the you you need to control certain variables over there because there are we have it's just an introductory uh, presentation uh, there are lots of uh, uh, you know uh, concepts of you know variables some independent variables dependent variables then controlled variables so experiment uh, is basically when you are controlling certain variables for example you want to study about the effect of violent uh, uh, games on children of a certain uh, of a certain uh, you know um, age uh, then you know uh, we can do an experimental study on it by you know uh, um, finding a group of students and um not you know controlling the their you know um, viewing of or playing um, games uh, we may uh, you know uh, we can differentiate or disseminate or you can say we can separate uh, those group of students uh, in different um groups for example one group won't uh, play any game for a certain period of time one group will uh, play the games for you know um, some hours and then one we can uh, you know select certain groups and then that will be experimenting you are controlling uh, um you know a certain attributes you are keeping certain va variables constant and then you are experimenting even you know when we want to find out the solution to any problem then also you know experiment um, the research can be done uh, so if you can help per per perfect it's perfect basically you know we draw from uh, you know the field of psychology and uh, if we are looking for you know causations and we know there are variables like you know there are there might be moderating variables there are mediating variables so when we experiment we actually have a control group to which you, we you know do not provide the experiment let me tell you say for example we want to uh, show that people who attend the uh, shurendranath college for women web lecture series they uh, know a little bit more about uh, communication research so i make some people sit in front of the lecture series and i give them a test so the dependent variable is their knowledge of communication research then i give them some test about communication research and find out you know whether uh, what is the level of communication research another group i you know a very similar group i make them sit in front of another uh, uh, web, uh, like or you know some other uh, entertainment series so that that is the control group and then we you know compare these two groups and we try and find out uh, Uh, whether uh, my my supposition is correct or not unfortunately you know the amount of infrastructure and the logistics that are required we do not have lots of uh, uh, experimental research uh, uh, in our field uh, so far but we borrow heavily from the field of psychology and uh, so that you know we can uh, kind of manipulate the independent variables 
to find out the effect on the dependent variables, keeping the intervening variables constant because there could be a lot of other variables. There could be, you know, uh, about uh, the net speed. It could be about whether you are doing on mobile or whatever. But we make sure that uh, when we are using two groups which are roughly similar, what we do is we uh, uh, take care of the intervening variables. I don't want to get into the moderating and the mediating uh, variables, but uh, uh, that's that's one of the ways of looking at it. But uh, uh, you know, you said everything, so I'm just repeating what she said. Thank you, sir, and thank you so much, ma'am. That cleared my doubt. Thank you. God bless you. Anybody else uh, has any questions? So you can. We still have uh, uh, two or three minutes left. Jyoti will remind them of the feedback, I'm sure. Yes, sir. I already did. In the chat box, I will once. So is, uh, do you have any last words, Atoshi, uh, for, for today's presentation? Or we'll just... Uh, thank you so much, sir, for giving me this opportunity. It's a, like it's a huge responsibility and the trust which my uh, professors have already always shown on me um, gave me the you know courage to sit here and uh, thanks for the students i can see the numbers i have not seen the number uh, when i was presenting now i can see the number of students uh, from all the universities my my uh, students from shrinath college for women uh, students from sister nivedita university and even i can see some names from st xavier's university uh, and my uh, some of my uh, co uh, scholars from uh, Guru Jambeshwar has also have also joined, and uh, thank you so much for uh, to Ananya and Jyoti for always supporting. So thank you so much, and happy Teachers Day once again. <laughs> so will thank, I, uh... thank you again. So everybody, please uh, fill up the feedback form correctly with your names and the email correct because the. Uh, uh, you know, certificate is linked to the email and the name you type in there. So if you type in a wrong name, you'll get a wrong certificate. If you type in a wrong email, you won't get the certificate. So please make sure that everything is typed in there. If anybody uh, who's present in the group, if anyone wants to say anything, you know, we can invite uh, anyone. Uh, okay. Is there anyone in the uh, group who would want to say something? Yes, I want to say this is Shwetta Brothapala. Yes, say something. Dr. Paul, please tell. <laughs> yes, Dr. Paul, okay. Uh, just want to say that... Uh, so she, you got a superb opportunity on the teacher's day and you did a fabulous job. Fantastic. Thank and you so much, sir. Don't say that uh, sir, I was nervous. Yes, everybody is nervous. So, but uh, okay, you did a fantastic job. Thanks Thank a lot. You, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for always encouraging. So, Father Alvin, do you, do you want to say something? Uh, we have Father Rigo as well. So. Uh, no, sir. Thank you so much and a happy Teacher's Day to all of you. Thank you, Father. Same to you. Thank, as you. Well. Thank you. So, uh, you can wind up. So, yes, sir. So, I will take this opportunity to thank our principal, ma'am, Dr. Purnima Bishas, and all the faculties of our Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey, Professor Ushashri Ray Sen Gupta, Shravani Mukhapadda, Kanka Mujumdar, Shottabutta Paul, and Anana Sen for making this event a success. And thanks to all the participants for joining us today. Thank you. Jyoti, please mention your name, Aljit. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yes, uh, myself, Jyoti Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Okay.